So today I have my husband Trey with me. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> and we're gonna be baking today. We're baking Domino's cheesy bread, a pepperoni and cheese bread, and no bake oatmeal balls, which I had in another video and I'll link that down below. But we're doing all that today. Did I miss anything? No. Baking wise. I'm hungry. Let's do it. Trey's always hungry. So there's that. Enjoy the video. So here you saw Trey just gave me some warm water and I'm dumping in some sugar and letting it dissolve and then he's putting in half a packet of yeast. We actually split all of our recipes that we were using in half for this. So that's why he only needed half the recipe. And while we were letting that kind of do its thing for 10 minutes, we were going to start doing our no-bake oatmeal balls. So Trey put in the rolled oats and I was scooping out peanut butter. And then after that we needed to just do honey mix it up throw in some chocolate chips and we did butterscotch chips i still was looking for peanut butter chips at aldi and i haven't found any so that's upsetting but for now we just did chocolate chips and butterscotch and then eventually you'll see us rolling them out where trey does the job of rolling and i do the job of scooping because we decided one i don't care for my hands to get sticky with that texture and trey doesn't care and two i'm more consistent when it comes to scooping like the same size and Trey felt like he wasn't so we just thought it was better if I scooped and he rolled. So now that we're done rolling, those guys just go into the fridge to set and then I put them in a different container, but still in the fridge. So now I was just adding some oil to this like yeast mixture. And then we had to measure out some flour, put the yeast in and some other goodies like salt and whatnot. And then Trey was going to be in charge of hand mixing and rolling out the dough. And then we eventually just had to let it rest for an hour to an hour and a half. So we just let it rest for an hour and a half and i don't actually mind making a mess of our dining room table like this with the flour everything wiped up super easily so it really wasn't even an issue and my only thing with this cheesy bread i felt like i could have used maybe a little more salt i didn't really measure the salt when it came to how much to add to the cheese so maybe that's my fault but anywho i digress um you just see me right now oiling up the bowl for the dough so then we're just gonna put that dough in the bowl that's oiled up, let it sit for an hour and a half and do its thing. So next up we had to shred the cheese for the cheesy bread. So we were doing half a block of extra sharp cheddar and half a block of mozzarella. Was I fully following the recipe? Not really. At this point, the cheese like amounts or whatever to me is a suggestion. I thought half a block sounded ideal, so that's what we went with. So now, 
what you're watching is I was mixing up some plain non-fat Greek yogurt and blue cheese and I added some lime juice, salt, and garlic powder to make a homemade like blue cheese dressing for Trey's wings. And meanwhile, Trey was shredding up a bunch of cheese for me and like the finer, greater part, whatever. And that was for the mac and cheese we were making. So that's a finished product of the blue cheese, which is Trey's favorite. And he thoroughly hated shredding the cheese in that little shredder part and he kept asking me are you sure you needed this finely shredded but i was determined that that's what i needed so he was actually shredding up a whole block of colby jack i think and i think he shredded up half a block of cheddar also is boiling i was getting some almond milk measured out and putting in some of this big daddy mac mix which tastes exactly like craft like the craft cheese powder but for some reason you have to mix it in with cold liquids so that's why i had to mix it in with the almond milk separately and then my favorite thing to do and trey loves it too is using greek yogurt in our mac and cheese so here i just have some greek yogurt almond milk and i was slowly putting in the cheese and i threw in some butter too and I was just mixing it up to make a nice little cheese sauce so that way everything's nice and melted. And here Trey was helping me and he added in that previous Big Daddy Mac mix, like liquid mixture that I did. So then we decided to just add in all the pasta to our baking sheet and I poured the cheese sauce over all the pasta, mixed it up, topped it with some more shredded cheese and then into the oven it goes. <laughs> So now while the mac and cheese is baking, our dough is done rising and it said to add some cornmeal on the bottom of the pan. We had it also sprayed with nonstick spray. I would skip the cornmeal part because all it did was like kind of burn on our bottom of our bread. But anywho, you just put some of the cheese mixture in there, crimp it up, do the little like slices. And then we topped it with the rest of the cheese mixture we had. And that also went in the oven. Like I said, I think I could have done a little more salt on the cheese mixture, but other than that, no complaints. Oh, and don't put the cornmeal on the bottom or corn, whatever it was. I just didn't think it was necessary since we had everything sprayed with nonstick spray. And I find it so satisfying to watch me wipe down this table because it was, like I said, so easy. Nothing got gooey and gunky on the table. So that was a nice plus. And then here's everything in the oven in the beginning, just doing its thing. So once the cheesy bread was almost done, we have canned a bunch of fresh tomatoes, like no salt or anything, just fresh crushed up tomatoes. So like a basic tomato sauce. So I did some of that in a pot with a bunch of garlic, garlic powder and some salt and made our own little like marinara style sauce. So now that the bread and the mac and cheese was done, we decided to eat and that was our dipping sauce. Okay, so now on this day, we were rushing to go to Trey's mom's house. I thought we weren't gonna head over there till like six-ish, but we ended up needing to get over there around four. So this all happened around like 2.45, 3 o'clock that I was looking up the recipe so I had all the right measurements to make this pepperoni cheesy bread. And Trey was showering and getting ready. I had just finished showering, so my hair is wet and washed and whatnot. And I was like, holy crap, I need to make this dough at least so that way it can rise. Even though the recipe did not call for any yeast, but since we had half a packet from the day before, I kind of went rogue and I, I mean, I knew what to do for the yeast to activate it and whatnot. So I figured I would do that, which you already see the yeast 
there activated and I just dumped it in with the dough. The only thing I hiccuped on is you could see the dough is too liquidy there because I didn't really account for the extra water that the yeast was going to add because obviously the yeast mixture needed water and sugar which meant it was liquidy and yeah so here now you just see me adding flour little by little until I got the right consistency. Now this is only my second time making dough or bread at all. The stuffed cheesy bread was my first attempt ever at any bread type of recipe. So I just had the general idea that the dough should not be that sticky and liquidy. It had to have a little more like pull to stick together. So that's why I was just slowly adding flour because I didn't want to accidentally add too much and then have a shitty dough. Finally, the dough was coming together really well, so I was able to put it on the table and just knead it out. You're supposed to knead the dough. At least the cheesy bread recipe said to knead the dough for five minutes, so that's just the general idea I was going for when I was kneading this dough. And I needed to keep adding some flour so that way it wouldn't stick to my hands. But other than that, the dough actually came out really good, and I'm surprised because obviously I kind of screwed it up a little bit when I added the yeast and water mixture. But the bread actually came out amazing when we baked it, but you'll see that in a hot minute. So now it's like five or six hours later, I was chopping up the pepperonis in half because I wasn't sure if I really had enough for the amount of dough that we had, and it rose a ton. I mean, it was rising for five hours, so that was just a lot. So I floured my table, put the dough down, and just spread everything out, and make no mistake, this dough was taking up about a quarter of our table. So it was huge. So I just tried my best to spread out the pepperoni and get the cheese nice and spread out too. And then I wanted to roll it up, make sure everything was good. It was yeah, yeah. This dough was a fat log. So Trey put the pepperoni on, I topped it with some cheese and we got that into the oven. And there was only a little bit of gooiness on the table at that point, but I didn't mind. And now our friend from Italy made like an espresso cake, panettone, panettone, whatever. So she wrote the recipe out and so I was doing that, giving it a try. Trey and I really liked it. The only thing we are going to change this weekend, I'm gonna make it again. I'm going to cut the recipe into like only make a third of the recipe because it's only me and Trey. So we don't really need a full on recipe, like a full cake. And also, we thought it could use more espresso. We love espresso and the flavor of coffee. So that could just be an us thing. So I think I'm going to cut the recipe into thirds, but maintain the amount of espresso. So we'll see how that turns out. But texture-wise and flavor-wise, it was amazing. And oh my God, look at how juicy that bread looks. That bread was so good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what you're doing. 